vinyl records are one of the few things that will unite both your dad and the craft beer drinking, beard waxing hipsters of Shoreditch. Way over a hundred years since the technology's invention, some people still consider them the only proper way to listen to music. But how do they work? First things first, how does the music get onto the record? Now I'm sure you've heard that sound travels in waves. Sound waves are simply vibrations in a medium, which is usually air, but sound also travels through vibrations through water and glass and other mediums too. And those vibrations, those waves, make their way to our ears where they then pass on those vibrations into the tiny bones that are in there. They set some of the fluid in your inner ear vibrating and eventually send electrical signals to the brain. Okay, got it. But at the simplest level, a record is an analog recording of those sound waves. In practice though, successfully recording those waves is very different from successfully playing them. One of the first records ever made had no way to play back the music. It was the recording of a song, thought to be the first recording of any human voice at all. 10 seconds of folk singing recorded visually, and what the inventor, Edouard Leon Scott de Martinville, called his Fon autograph. Martinville was a Parisian typesetter. He used an oil lamp to blacken sheets of paper, then placed a horn to focus the sounds of the lady singing towards them. Her sound waves moved a little stylus up and down, etching the vibrations into the paper. It's a really lovely idea, although it then took about 150 years for anyone to translate those scratches back into sound and play the lost song. Today, recording is not usually done direct disc in that way. Instead, musicians first record and mix their music until they're happy with it, often on tape. But then it's kind of similar. The mixed sound is played into a record cutting lathe in real time. And the sound waves move a needle head, which then cuts grooves into a thin lacquer disc. The depth of those grooves representing the shape of the sound waves. The next steps to make the final record get kind of complicated here, to be honest, but let's just simplify. That lacquer copy is then used to make a stamper, a perfect negative image of the record, made of metal, with ridges instead of grooves, and then the stamper is loaded into a hydraulic record press, pushed into soft vinyl, and then that becomes the record itself. And these stampers can undergo up to 100 pounds of pressure, and serious audiophiles will listen out for the slight differences from records made with fresher stampers. Okay, so that's how you capture those sound waves and how you make the record, but how does playing them turn those ridges back into sound. Well, the way records are played has not really changed much since the first phonographs and gramophones. You get a needle and it's usually tipped with diamond or something else very, very hard, and it rests on the record as it spins on a turntable. And the grooves contain the image of the sound waves. And if you look at them under an electron microscope, they actually look like tiny bumpy valleys. And I'm gonna to link to a video showing that in the footnotes below. Now, as the record starts to spin, the needle moves across those little grooves. And that moving needle actually moves a small magnet inside a coil of wire, which induces a fluctuating electric current. And the current travels to a speaker, which then converts those electrical signals back into kinetic movement, vibrating the speaker cone to reproduce the sound waves of that original song, which then travels to your ear, recreating the song in all its glory. So, it's time for the important question. Does vinyl really sound better? Well, serious collectors may listen out for the tubey magic of vinyl, but the answer here really depends on what you class as better. Records have personality. They change with age and playing, and they come with great stories, like the 1969 Led Zeppelin album that supposedly had such dynamic range, it would make record-playing needles jump out of their grooves. But a CD and a vinyl record pulled from the same master tapes are, at least at the beginning, mathematically identical. And digital music can be reproduced so much more easily. You can listen to a track recorded by a band on the other side of the world yesterday Today, at the end of the day, it all comes down to what music you enjoy and how you enjoy listening to it. Which is why I'm gonna head off and play some Eurotrance on my gramophone. We always love hearing from you lots, so uh, let us know in the comments below what you like listening to and what your preferred method of listening to it is. Maybe it's one of those old school cups with a bit of string attached. Anyway, check out more Brit Lab here, and we'll see you on the next video.